Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. He's helped me to transform, to be transformed into the image of God, which is God's purpose for my life. I have the faith now to be able to stand through anything that I go through. I know that I'm going to come out victorious on the other side because of what I've learned through this ministry. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. This week, I've been doing a special teaching that I've entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? Lessons from the 2020 Elections. And I've already said these things this week, but I know that there are people watching this program from all over the, excuse me, all over the world, and I know that there are people that may think, well, what, how does this apply to me? What I'm talking about is just the moral decline that has happened in the United States. And uh, in many ways, we are more moral and still have more of a Christian foundation than most places on this planet. So if these things are happening in the United States, this applies to anywhere that you are in the world. Now, there are certain places that are experiencing revival, and praise God for that. And if that's you... Praise God. But if nothing else, listen to what's happening here. Take lessons from it and pray for us and help us as we begin to stand against these things. So basically, I'm just dealing with two huge lessons to learn from the 2020 elections. And it's not about personalities because on the day that I'm making these programs, it's just two days after our national elections. And I don't even know who won the presidential race. So I'm not talking about individuals or personalities. I'm talking about policies. But there was a clear distinction between the uh, things that were being promoted that they were running on for the Democrats versus the Republicans. The Democrats were running, saying that they would extend all of the... uh, Uh, ability for abortion up until and even after the point of birth, that if a mother decided she didn't want that child, they could just let that child die. That was their claim. They are promoting homosexuality, LGBTQ, RSTUV, all of those different things without exception. They are trying to uh, uh, codify it as a civil rights and make it part of law so that it would never (coughs) be subject to any other questions about it, that they could make people such as me hire homosexuals, transgender, allow people to go, men to go into women's restroom if they felt like it on that day and stuff. And if I take any stand against that, then I could be punished under the law. It was just ungodly and on and on and on you could go. I mean, uh, the uh, Democrats were actually promoting and openly embracing socialism as a good thing, which socialism is anti-God and on and on. So anyway, I've already identified that one of the big takeaways from this was that 52% of voting Americans voted for things that I've just spoken against. Uh, They voted for abortion up until and even after birth. They voted for homosexuality, transgenderism, uh, men competing as women, uh, on and on. They voted for socialism. They voted for anarchy and all of these things. And that is a terrible, terrible indictment about where the moral condition of America is. Another lesson that you learn from this, and this is what I want to start ministering on, and dealing with today is that this is a direct results of the church not being the salt and the light that God called us to be. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. Matter of fact, let me turn over and read that because I'm not sure that I could quote that one exactly, but it's very important. He said in Matthew chapter 5, In verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. The church, Jesus said, was the salt of the earth. We're what preserves it. We're what adds flavor to the the, uh, earth, to the unbelievers. 
And did you know in this nation, certainly not every person who's been an American was a Christian. And yet Christianity influenced all of our laws. It influenced our Constitution. It influenced the way that we've conducted ourselves for hundreds of years. And uh, yet today, people are coming against this and they have marginalized the church. You know, again, I want to advertise these products that I'm putting out because uh, one of the things I'm going to do is uh, give a DVD where I interviewed David Barton and E.W. Jackson, and we talked about Black Lives Matter, and we talked about uh, the history of the U.S. David Barton is just an expert on this, and we talked about different things concerning slavery. And one of the things that's happened in the United States, and it's happening all around the world, but people are rewriting the history, and they're trying to paint it that America was always racist and stuff, and I'm not going to teach all of these things. I encourage you to get this material because it is just, I mean, this is dynamite. This is gold, the things that we're saying. But David Barton especially goes back and shows that 10 out of the 13 colonies in the United States opposed um, um, slavery. And there were actually uh, blacks that were elected to the uh, city council and mayors of cities prior to the American Revolution. George Washington and George Mason actually petitioned the British government to outlaw slavery and on and on it goes. And yet people are painting America as it was conceived in racism. That is not true. Certainly there was racism. Racism is not just black and white either. The majority of slaves throughout the history of the world have been white people. In America, it wasn't that way, but there were, I mean, the Indians, the American Indians had a higher number of slaves. They would conquer another tribe and take them as slaves. And there, there was a higher percentage of slavery among American Indians than there was among the colonists. I'm not saying that any of that is good, but I'm just saying that slavery, racism is just demonic. It is something that's evil. And I feel sorry for people that have been a, a you know, had that happen to them. I've, I've been the uh, recipient of racism. I saw people around me killed by blacks simply because they were white. And I know some of you think that's impossible, but that's, that's what I've experienced. Anyway, I'm saying that we are the salt and the light of the earth, and this nation was conceived, and the Godly Christian principles were an influence on this nation. It wasn't perfect, and certainly there were things, there were compromises that were made and stuff that I don't agree with, and yet you cannot deny that there is a godly moral foundation to the United States. But see, our uh, education system has been teaching that differently, and we've now raised up a generation that they call it the counterculture. They're trying to rewrite history, and because of it, Man, we are losing this salt and light. And they actually look at the church and religion as being the problem, which it's not. Anyway, that's what all this material is about. Please get it because it will answer these things in more details. But it says if the salt has lost its savor, in other words, if you've quit doing your job, if you don't have any saltiness left, then what's it good for? It's good for nothing but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot of men. And basically, this to a degree, a large degree, much bigger degree than it should be, is where the church is today. It goes on to say, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is saying that you don't light a candle and then put it under something that dampens the candle light. No, you put it in a place where it can give light. We are the light of the world. Jesus is ultimately the light of the world, but He lives in us and He shines through us. And God has given the church the responsibility to let His light shine and to speak out on what is right and what is wrong, to proclaim that this is sin and that God loves sinners and that God wants to forgive you, but you've got to admit you're a sinner before you can receive that forgiveness. Jesus died for the ungodly, and if a person won't admit they're ungodly, well, then Jesus didn't die for you. You can't save yourself. You need a Savior. 
We need to be speaking out on these things. Let me take an example here of Ezekiel. And I haven't got time to go through this whole thing. Let me just summarize it. But in Ezekiel chapter 1 is where Ezekiel had this vision and he saw these cherubs. There were four of them and each one had four separate faces. Anyway, we could go into all of that, but it was a miraculous vision of these angelic beings and it was repeated in the 10th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. And then in Ezekiel chapter 3, after the Lord had spoken these things to uh, Ezekiel, he told him to take this scroll, which was the Word of God, these prophecies. And let me just read this in verse... 10, it says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all of my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears and go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, Thus saith the Lord, whether you will hear or whether you will forbear. And then the Spirit of the Lord took him up and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from this place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them is the noise of a great rushing. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. And again, I hadn't got time to go back through all of this, but he had caused him to take a scroll, which was the Word of God, these prophecies, and eat it. And it said it was in his mouth as sweet as honey. You know, this is exactly what it says over in Psalms, that it's sweeter than honey and the honeycomb, talking about the Word of the Lord. And so he made him uh, eat this. All of this was a vision but he took the word of God into himself. Then the spirit of the Lord took him and put him by the people that he had told him to speak to. And look what happened in verse 15. It says, Then I came to them of the captivity at uh, Tel Abib that dwelleth by the river of Chebar. And I sat there where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. And I wish I had time to go back and put all of this in its context, but he had just seen the glory of God like few people had ever seen. God gave him these prophecies that he was supposed to deliver to the people. And then the Spirit of the Lord took him and put him there among these people. But for seven days, he was astonished and he didn't say a single thing. God had told him to go and speak, and yet he was so overwhelmed I don't know exactly why. Maybe it was because he saw the glory of the Lord. You know, I didn't have an experience quite like Ezekiel, but I had an experience in 1968 where God revealed his glory to me. And I mean, I was overwhelmed with what I saw. And I can relate to that. It could be that he was aware of these prophecies that were about judgment upon his nation and upon these people. And he was hesitant to say it. But for whatever reason, he was given the command, I just read that to you, to go speak this to the people, all of these words that he was commanded, and yet he just sat there for seven days and didn't say a word. And so look at this in verse 16. It says, And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying... Remember the context. He had been told to go speak to these people, and for whatever reason, he hadn't done it yet. And here's what the Lord said unto him, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Man, that's a strong statement. And the reason I'm bringing this up is to say that God had given Ezekiel a command to speak to the people. He hadn't done it yet. And so the Lord told him, look, you're like a watchman, you know, on a, on a city wall. You are the lookout. And if you see the enemy coming and if you don't warn the people and therefore they get overcome and taken by the enemy, their blood will I require at your hand. 
BUT IF YOU WARN THEM, AND IF THEY DON'T TAKE HEED TO WHAT YOU'RE SAYING, WELL, THEN THEY MAY STILL GET KILLED, BUT AT LEAST YOU'VE DELIVERED YOUR OWN SOUL. AND THIS WAS SPOKEN TO EZEKIEL, NOT ONLY IN THIS ONE INSTANCE, BUT OVER IN EZEKIEL CHAPTER 33, THE SAME THING WAS SAID TO HIM AGAIN. IT WAS REPEATED NEARLY WORD FOR WORD. AND SO HERE'S THE POINT THAT I'VE I've BEEN TALKING ABOUT LESSONS TO LEARN FROM THIS RECENT ELECTION CYCLE. THE FIRST LESSON IS THAT AMERICA IS IN BAD SHAPE, THAT WE ARE IN A MORAL CRISIS, THAT THE MAJORITY OF AMERICANS DON'T VOTE MORALLY. THEY DON'T VOTE. YOU KNOW, I HEARD BILLY SUNDAY SAY THAT IT'S it's HYPOCRITICAL TO SAY THY KINGDOM COME, THY WILL BE DONE, AND THEN GO TO THE uh, VOTING BOOTH AND VOTE AGAINST EVERYTHING THAT IS TRYING TO STOP GOD'S KINGDOM FROM COMING HERE ON THIS EARTH. IT'S HYPOCRISY, AND WE HAD A LOT OF QUOTE, UNQUOTE, CHRISTIANS. I'M SURE THERE WERE SOME PEOPLE THAT WERE ONLY CHRISTIANS IN NAME ONLY WHO HAVE NEVER HAD a, a RELATIONSHIP WITH THE LORD WHO VOTED UNGODLY, BUT THERE WERE SOME CHRISTIANS, I'M SURE BORN AGAIN CHRISTIANS, PEOPLE WHO ARE MY BROTHERS AND SISTERS IN THE LORD. IF THEY WERE TO DIE, THEY WOULD GO TO BE WITH THE LORD IN HEAVEN, AND YET THEY VOTED FOR PEOPLE THAT ARE INTO KILLING BABIES EVEN AFTER THEY'RE BORN. THEY VOTED FOR PEOPLE THAT ARE FOR HOMOSEXUALITY, TRANSGENDERISM. THEY VOTED FOR PEOPLE THAT STAND AGAINST EVERYTHING THAT THE BIBLE STANDS FOR. AND YET THEY PRAY, THY KINGDOM COME, THY WILL BE DONE ON EARTH AS IT IS IN HEAVEN. THAT'S INCONSISTENT. AND YOU KNOW WHY THIS IS HAPPENING? IT'S HAPPENING BECAUSE MINISTERS WHO ARE WATCHMEN HAVE NOT WARNED THE PEOPLE. I'VE GOT SOME FRIENDS RIGHT NOW, PEOPLE THAT I HAVE GONE TO THESE CHURCHES IN TIMES PAST, PEOPLE THAT HAVE MEGA CHURCHES, OVER 10,000 PEOPLE COMING, WHO HAVE REFUSED TO TAKE A STAND ON ANY SOCIAL OR MORAL ISSUE. THEY WILL NOT SPEAK AGAINST ABORTION. THEY WILL NOT SPEAK AGAINST uh, HOMOSEXUALITY, TRANSGENDERISM, THE ISSUE OF YOU KNOW, HAVING MALES GOING INTO FEMALES' RESTROOMS AND LOCKER ROOMS. THEY WOULDN'T SPEAK ON SOMETHING LIKE THAT BECAUSE THEY DON'T WANT TO OFFEND ANYBODY. THEY ARE A WATCHMAN ON THE WALL, AND THEY ARE NOT GIVING WARNING. THEY ARE NOT TELLING PEOPLE THE TRUTH. THEY AREN'T STANDING UP FOR WHAT TRUTH IS. AND BECAUSE OF IT, OUR NATION IS MOVING IN THE WRONG DIRECTION. I'M BELIEVING WE HAVEN'T PASSED THE POINT OF NO RETURN. I'M BELIEVING THAT WE'RE HAVING A REVIVAL AND THAT PEOPLE ARE COMING BACK TO THE LORD. BUT WE ARE DEFINITELY MOVING IN THE WRONG DIRECTION, AND THAT'S ONE OF THE THINGS THAT THIS LAST ELECTION SHOWED AND MADE ABUNDANTLY CLEAR. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? The, THESE PASTORS THAT WILL NOT STAND UP AND SPEAK OUT ON THIS, THEY ARE THE PROBLEM. I THINK YOU COULD SAY THAT THE BODY OF CHRIST AS A WHOLE IS THE PROBLEM BECAUSE IT'S NOT ONLY THE PASTORS. EACH ONE OF US HAVE A, a REALM OF INFLUENCE AT WORK, FAMILY, NEIGHBORHOODS, BUSINESSES THAT YOU GO INTO AND PATRONIZE. WE HAVE A RESPONSIBILITY TO BE SALT AND LIGHT. THAT'S NOT JUST THE PASTORS. THAT'S EVERY INDIVIDUAL MEMBER IN THE BODY OF CHRIST. SO THE BODY OF CHRIST AS A WHOLE HAS A RESPONSIBILITY IN THIS AREA, BUT I BELIEVE THAT MINISTERS ARE EVEN MORE ACCOUNTABLE. WE ARE LIKE WATCHMEN ON THE WALL. AND I'M SPEAKING TO PEOPLE WHO ARE MINISTERS TODAY THAT IF YOU ARE NOT STANDING UP AND TAKING A STAND, AND YOU CAN DO IT IN LOVE. EPHESIANS 4, CHAPTER VERSE 15, SAYS THAT WE HAVE TO SPEAK THE TRUTH IN LOVE AND GROW UP unto, UNTO HIM. AND SO, YES, YOU DON'T USE THE BIBLE LIKE A CLUB TO JUST TELL PEOPLE THAT GOD HATES THEM BECAUSE HE DOESN'T HATE THEM. GOD SO LOVED THE WORLD THAT HE GAVE HIS ONLY BEGOTTEN SON. AND SO WE SPEAK THE TRUTH, BUT WE SPEAK IT IN LOVE, BUT IT'S NOT THE TRUTH OR LOVE, IT'S THE TRUTH IN LOVE. THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE WHO WILL SAY, BUT I JUST AM TRYING TO LOVE THIS PERSON INTO THE KINGDOM. I DON'T EVER WANT TO SAY ANYTHING THAT WOULD OFFEND THEM. THAT'S NOT SPEAKING THE TRUTH IN LOVE. THERE ARE PEOPLE WHO THINK THAT IF I JUST LOVE A PERSON, THAT THAT, that WILL GET THEM BORN AGAIN. LOVE IS NOT WHAT CHANGES A PERSON'S LIFE. JESUS SAID, YOU SHALL KNOW THE TRUTH, AND THE TRUTH SHALL MAKE YOU FREE. THAT'S JOHN CHAPTER 8, VERSE 32. IT'S THE TRUTH THAT SETS YOU FREE, AND IT'S ONLY THE TRUTH YOU KNOW THAT SETS YOU FREE. WHAT PEOPLE DON'T KNOW IS DESTROYING THEM. 
THE LORD SAID THAT MY PEOPLE ARE DESTROYED FOR A LACK OF KNOWLEDGE, AND THAT IS HAPPENING TODAY. AND NOT ONLY GOD'S PEOPLE, BUT THE PEOPLE THAT DON'T EVEN KNOW THE LORD. THEY AREN'T BEING PRESENTED WITH THE TRUTH, AND IT'S THE FAULT OF THE BODY OF CHRIST. I'M NOT SAYING THIS TO SHAME YOU. I'M FIRST OF ALL SAYING THAT THIS IS THE CRISIS SITUATION THAT WE FIND OURSELVES IN, AND IN CASE ANYBODY WASN'T PAYING ATTENTION, THIS LAST ELECTION SHOULD HAVE MADE IT ABUNDANTLY CLEAR TO YOU THAT THE VAST MAJORITY OF THE UNITED STATES DOES NOT HAVE A BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW. THEY DO NOT VOTE FOR BIBLICAL PRINCIPLES. AND SO IT SHOULD WAKE YOU UP, AND THEN I'M SAYING THAT WE HAVE A RESPONSIBILITY, THE FAULT OF the AMERICA GOING THE WAY IT HAS AND LOSING ITS MORAL PENDINGS AND FOUNDATIONS IS AT THE FEET OF THE BODY OF CHRIST, SPECIFICALLY MINISTERS. WE ARE WATCHMEN ON THE WALL, AND WE'VE GOT TO SPEAK FORTH THE TRUTH. AND I KNOW I'LL GET CRITICISM. I'LL HAVE A LOT OF PEOPLE COME AGAINST ME. I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THE CRITICS, IT SEEMS LIKE THE CRITICS ARE MORE VOCAL THAN THE PEOPLE WHO RECEIVE IT. I KNOW THAT THERE ARE THOUSANDS, MAYBE HUNDREDS OF THOUSANDS OR TENS OF THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE WHO ARE REJOICING AT HEARING THE TRUTH AND GLAD THAT SOMEBODY'S SPEAKING IT, AND MOST OF YOU WON'T SAY ANYTHING. BUT THE PEOPLE WHO DON'T LIKE THIS, THEY WILL BE VERY VOCAL. YOU KNOW, I'M ENCOURAGING YOU THAT IF YOU ARE IN AGREEMENT WITH THIS, YOU OUGHT TO CALL IN AND JUST SAY SOME WORD OF ENCOURAGEMENT OR SOMETHING OR GET THESE MATERIALS SO THAT IT COULD HELP PREPARE YOU SO THAT YOU COULD SHARE THESE THINGS WITH OTHER PEOPLE. BUT MAN, THIS IS ONE OF THE PROBLEMS IS THAT THE PEOPLE WHO ARE AGAINST GOD ARE VERY VOCAL. THE PEOPLE THAT ARE FOR GOD AND AGREE WITH THE THINGS THAT I'M SAYING ON THESE PROGRAMS, THE VAST MAJORITY OF YOU WILL NEVER RESPOND TO THIS PROGRAM. AND EVEN THOUGH I DON'T DO THIS TO GET RESPONSE, I GUARANTEE YOU IT'S HARD SOMETIMES TO OVERCOME ALL OF THE CRITICISM AND THE MEAN, HURTFUL THINGS THAT ARE SAID uh, WHEN you, YOU SEE A LOT OF THOSE AND YET THE PEOPLE WHO ARE IN AGREEMENT DON'T SAY ANYTHING. SO I'M JUST ENCOURAGING YOU TO PARTICIPATE TO BE A PART OF THIS. YOU KNOW, HELP US GET OUT THE TRUTH. HELP US PROMOTE THE GOSPEL. I'VE JUST ADDED uh, A HUGE AMOUNT OF uh, MONTHLY EXPENSE TO OUR TELEVISION MINISTRY, TAKING ON MORE BROADCAST, HUNDREDS OF THOUSANDS OF DOLLARS PER MONTH. AND I WOULD ENCOURAGE YOU, IF YOU ARE ONE OF THOSE THAT'S BEING BLESSED BY THIS, TO PARTICIPATE AND TO BE A PART OF THIS AND TO HELP SUPPORT IT. WE'RE LOOKING FOR 10,000 NEW PARTNERS. AND uh, WE CONSIDER A PARTNER ANY PERSON THAT GIVES ON A REGULAR MONTHLY BASIS, BUT OUR AVERAGE PARTNERSHIP IS AROUND 50-SOMETHING DOLLARS, OVER $50 PER MONTH. BUT WHATEVER IT IS THAT YOU COULD DO, I'D ENCOURAGE YOU TO BECOME A PART OF IT. BUT STAND AND HELP US TO BECOME WATCHMEN ON THE WALL. HELP US TO STAND UP. AND I BELIEVE IT WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE, AND NOT ONLY YOURS, BUT YOU WILL HELP US TO CHANGE SOMEBODY ELSE'S LIFE. AND PRAISE GOD, I'M NOT WILLING TO LET AMERICA JUST CONTINUE ON THIS ROAD THAT IT'S ON. I'M STANDING UP. I'M BEING A WATCHMAN. I'M CALLING OUT. AND THE LORD SAID, WHETHER THEY HEAR OR WHETHER THEY FORBEAR, THAT'S NOT MY RESPONSIBILITY, BUT IT IS MY RESPONSIBILITY TO SPEAK OUT. AGAIN, I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THESE MATERIALS. IF YOU LISTEN, OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU MORE DETAIL ON WHAT'S IN THEM. BUT I TELL YOU, THESE ARE THINGS THAT COULD REALLY HELP YOU AND EQUIP YOU SO THAT YOU COULD BE THE SALT AND THE LIGHT THAT GOD WANTS YOU TO BE. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER. PLEASE TAKE ADVANTAGE OF THESE MATERIALS AND CALL OR WRITE TODAY. ANDREW'S NEW TEACHING TITLED, WHERE DO WE GO FROM HERE? LESSONS FROM THE 2020 ELECTIONS IS AVAILABLE AS A CD OR DVD ALBUM MADE FROM OUR DAILY TELEVISION BROADCAST. INCLUDED IN THIS FOUR-PART ALBUM, YOU'LL ALSO GET THE AMERICA ON THE BRINK PANEL DISCUSSION AND ANDREW'S RACE RELATIONS DISCUSSION. THE AMERICA ON THE BRINK PANEL DISCUSSION INCLUDES ANDREW WOMACK, TONY PERKINS, E.W. JACKSON, GENERAL JERRY BOYKIN, BILL FEDERER, AND JANET BOYNES. THE RACE RELATIONS PANEL DISCUSSION INCLUDES ANDREW WOMACK, E.W. JACKSON, AND DAVID BARTON. Both panels share a biblical perspective on important political matters in our culture today, such as racism, riots, Black Lives Matter, homosexuality, abortion, and more. On today's program, Andrew also mentioned the theatrical DVD titled, In God We Trust. This patriotic DVD features reenactments of significant American historical events, along with inspiring musical numbers. 
Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. You know, I've had a desire to have a 24-7 phone center where we could take calls all of the time. Right now, we're operating uh, five days a week, 24 hours a day, but we are starting to open on Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 in the morning until 6 p.m. just so that we can minister to you better. So we've expanded these hours. I encourage you to check it out at 719-635-1111. Hey, I'm excited. God is going to do something special during these meetings. I felt that he was just speaking the truth. The perspective is so different. It's so new and the, the understanding runs so deep. You have to get to where you believe in the power of words every moment of every day. When you start speaking to your problem and commanding it to leave, that's when you start seeing great things happen. I know that he gets before the Lord and there's always a freshness. There's a today in time word. Andrew's teaching and the love that he has for God's Word and truth. It is the gospel truth. Do you want to connect with like-minded believers? Then Karis Bible Studies is the place for you. Find a Bible study near you by visiting karisbiblestudies.net. You know, the Lord has given me a huge vision and we've been blessed up to this point, but I've still got so much that God's leading me to do. I'm believing God for 10,000 new partners. We've already got over $120 million worth of buildings in just the last nine years, but I've got at least $100 million worth, maybe $200 million worth of buildings still in my heart for our students, for an activity center. We've got a new student housing that we've got a preliminary drawing of that is showing you a little idea of what it would look like. This one would house about 120 people. Our others are gonna be smaller with maybe somewhere around 40 people per dorm, but we need this student housing and we need people to become partners. I'm believing for 10,000 new partners. I would ask you to pray about it, and if the Lord says so, join with us and help us change people's lives through Karis Bible College.